This is the Pure Plate Reverb from Universal Audio, and it's actually been one of my favorite reverbs for quite some time, and yet I've hardly mentioned it on the channel. Now, the reason for that is until recently, you actually had to have Universal Audio hardware, such as my Apollo X4, in order to run their plugins. But that changed, and now some of these plugins are available for you to purchase and run on just about any door. They run as VST. AUs and AAX plugins. So now I'm a bit more happy to tell you about them because you can go ahead and make use of them yourself. And why is this one of my favorite reverbs? Well, the sound, I have to say. I've got it applied here to an acoustic guitar. Let's have a quick listen. To me, it's just got a wonderfully natural sound to it, okay? And although it has a few features, which I'm gonna talk about, as I say, it's the sound which won me over with this one. So what are those features? Well, we have a low cut that you can see here, easily switched on. As you will know if you've watched this channel regularly, I always low cut my reverbs so that they don't get too muddy. So this is nice to have this here. You don't have to have an external EQ to do this. We've got pre-delay. This just helps to create a little bit of separation in time between the original source and the reverb, okay? And that helps with separation so that your reverb doesn't sort of mask um, your original source. And then we have the reverb time here. This is probably the most significant change you'll make with this reverb. You can adjust that by sliding this needle from left to right, or you can use these plus and minus buttons, or you can grab this little sort of graphic over here and drag that around if that's what floats your boat. Let's uh, put that up pretty high to a long reverb and have a listen. And it's when I stop it, yeah, you can really hear that really long tail as opposed to where I had it before. A much shorter tail there, okay. So it's nice and sort of fluid way of adjusting it there. Then we have some bass and treble controls just to shape it. And again, I've removed quite a lot of the low end out of this, okay. I just like that sort of high sparkle um, with my reverb here. A balance control for left and right. And then a dry, wet mix control. And one of the things they have on a lot of these plugins is also a solo button as well. So you can create your blend between between dry and wet, but if you're in a situation where you quickly want to listen to just the wet signal, you can put that solo on. Now I've got it on all the time here because I actually have this on a bus. And generally when I put reverbs on a bus, I have um, the only the wet sound on the bus and then I blend them with my faders later. Now I've also got this applied to a vocal on this particular track. So let me switch over to, let me just find it here. I'll switch over to the reverb Verb, which is on the vocal, and we'll have a listen to that. Was it the fear of my touch? Was I too near you too much, too soon? That kept you running. I just feel like the sound of that speaks for itself. <laughs> Hi, folks, I'm Mike. And I hope you will. Now that Universal Audio plugins are available natively, I wanted to tell you about what I reckon are the best five of those plugins. Now I've got a bit of a criteria happening here, and that is I reckon they should all be kind of noticeable in your mix or make a noticeable difference. Some of their other plugins are very, very good, but they're really quite subtle, especially if you're just starting out with mixing. Now something which is not going to be very subtle later on in the video is my segue to the sponsor of this video who is not Universal Audio but DistroKid. If you follow the VIP link in the description down below you'll get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music. Now we're going to start off having said all of that about subtleness with a plugin which is probably the most subtle out of the five. As obvious as it is I just couldn't help but include an LA-2A compressor. And of course, Universal Audio actually make the hardware version 
of this plugin. Now it comes in three different flavors. I'm using the silver one here. There's also the gray one and just the regular LA2A. There's a few subtle differences between the three, but it mainly comes down to timing, okay? Like attack and release. This is the fastest of the three and I generally end up using this a lot more than the other two. Now, one of the things I wanna tell you about this, if you're new to kind of compression at all, this is possibly the easiest of all compressors to use because there's only really one knob that you use a lot of the time, this peak reduction knob. I've made a video concerning this. You can follow the link for it just here where I talk about using this with vocal compression. And that's what we're gonna do with it now. Now I'm gonna play this vocal part in the mix and I'm gonna sort of turn this off and on so that you can hear the difference it makes, which is fairly subtle. And we're gonna to listen to a reasonably long passage just to give you a chance here to really absorb what you're hearing. Let's start off with it off and you'll see me switch it down here when I switch it on. Was it the fear of my touch? Was I too near you too much too soon? That kept you running If you can't hear it, go back and have another listen. It's reasonably subtle. But what I'm hearing with it is not just that we're getting a little bit more presence through the compression, but we're just getting a little bit more richness and a little bit more sparkle to it as well. It's very subtle, but I really love what it's doing to that vocal there. <laughs> Regulars to the channel will know I'm not much of a keyboard player. You won't see any finger gymnastics here. However, even if you're not much of a player, you can still use piano, synth and organ and sounds to add texture and color to your music. One of my favorite types of sounds to use is a B3 organ and Universal Audio have made this wonderful waterfall B3. Now I've made a little demo of this with the piece of music we were listening to earlier just so you can hear how it adds a little something to what was essentially a guitar part with a few strings. Now before we listen to it and when we are listening to it I want you to see how I'm not only just playing the notes but also adjusting some of the controls here so I'll be adjusting some of the draw bars to change the sound you'll see me using the swirl pedal quite a lot to change the dynamics and you'll also see me switching the speed of the rotary speaker we'll talk about the rotary speaker later let's just have a listen to this wonderful b3 organ played very simply <laughs> So I was, as I say, moving a few things around there just to change the sound. It sort of came in two halves, that um, organ playing there in terms of the, the style of the sound. So we saw the draw bars moving, we saw the swirl pedal moving, etc. But let's take a look at that rotary speaker. So if we switch at the top to rotary, we can see that we're playing through a rotary speaker as they were. And we've also got a fair amount of control over the sound here by being able to change the actual microphone phones that we're using, the mic position, um, all of that kind of stuff, which we can just adapt this so we can adapt this sound and just make it our own. Also, this I was using a sort of a fairly tame version of the sound there, but you can make this sort of really gritty by using the power amplifier section as well. Just push that up there and just play a chord. Okay, probably not gritty enough. Let's just really push it up. 
get the idea there. Lots of detail in this plugin, and that's why I love using it. I have to admit, I've used the B3 sound quite a lot in my previous releases, and when I have released my music, I've used DistroKid. Now, one of the great features they have is the hyperfollow feature. Check it out. This is the hyperfollow page for one of my EPs, Wonderland. When people visit this web page, they can choose for themselves which one of these great platforms they want to listen to my music on. But I didn't have to create this page. It was generated automatically for me when I uploaded my EP to DistroKid. If we visit my DistroKid page here and look at this EP and scroll down, you can see the section just at the bottom here where they supply the link for me to share. Now I can share that on places like Facebook where they will automatically be generated my album artwork and people can just click on this and go straight to that hyperlink page. Now this is all included with the base price of DistroKid which is just $19.99 per year. If you follow the link Link in the description you'll get 7% off of that already great price. Now although I do love that plate reverb that we had at the beginning of this video for many years now I've been a fan of the sound of the halls the large halls with the lexicon reverbs okay so it's really nice to see this in plug-in format here with the lexicon 224. Now I would love to be able to pretend that when I use this I twiddle with all the sliders and buttons here to tweak the sound that I really want but I have to say for me personally most of the time I do select that large hall I don't do much else and I just blend it in on a bus and I just really like the sound that we get I've applied it to the vocal here have a listen was it the fear of my touch was I too near you too much too soon Let's just quickly solo that vocal so you can more clearly hear the reverb sound. Was it the fear of my touch? Was I too near you? It's just the tail of the that reverb that I appreciate so much. However, you don't have to be like me and just go for that. You can fiddle and tweak to get a really nice sound out of this in different ways with very different styles. There's eight preset uh, reverbs which you can use as starting points and then adapt. And then there's also a chorus. If you hold shift and select one of these, there's a chorus effect in there as well. You can further go ahead and tweak things here. If you click on this open, you've got some more tweaking that you can do of the sounds up here. And interestingly, they've even faithfully produced this so wonderfully that they've included the bugs which were in the original units you can actually switch those bugs off by clicking on the UAD logo at the top there <laughs> eagle-eyed regular viewers to this channel will have noticed I'm using a different microphone than my usual one um Honestly, this video is not sponsored by Universal Audio. They don't even know I'm making it. However, this is another product made by Universal Audio, the SD1 Dynamic Microphone. Let me know in the comments down below if you can hear any differences between this and my regular microphone. Talking about things that Universal Audio make, they also make one of the other really famous compressors of all time, the 1176. And thankfully, they also make it in plug-in version. This is my fifth pick. I normally use this version of it, the blackface version, but there's also the blue stripe version and the, the I think it's called the anniversary or the 40th anniversary edition. They're all subtly different. Again, um, probably the most notable difference with this anniversary edition is that we have a two to one ratio, which is not available on the others. But I more often than not end up using the blackface. Now, the reason why you're going to choose an 1176 over an LA-2A for compression at times is when you want a little bit more control because there is some control over ratio with this and also attack and release and in particular 1176s have a really fast attack time and fast release time as well so they're super useful for grabbing transients that spike at the beginning of a sound which you want to control Probably this song is not the most appropriate example, um, but I've used it anyway. And you'll see as I play this vocal, you'll see the needle actually quickly reacting to the beginning of each word. Was it the fear of my 
touch Was I too near you too much too soon That kept you running So really useful for that amongst other things as well can really add some sort of drive and grit sometimes to certain things Now just to give some attention to detail, one of the things Universal Audio have included is, um, I think people found out with the original hardware units that you could actually get a specific sound by pushing in all of the ratio buttons at the same time. If you hold shift on the keyboard and do that, you can do the same here. I love to see that attention to detail. I use the 1176 in both serial and parallel compression. If you don't know what they are or how you would use them with a vocal, I recommend you watch this video right here.